hello welcome or welcome back to my channel hasty books i'm camilla today i'm talking about some of my goals for 2023 so i'm kind of diving more and more but slowly one step at a time i did classic now i'm doing my countries reading around the world tbr for 2023 i'm doing tbr with specific kind of countries because because last year the beginning of the year went well because I had picked some countries, I picked some books specifically and then I stopped thinking about it purposefully and I kind of went by the wayside and I did not accomplish my goal of reading from 12 new to me countries. So I've made a list for 2023 and I've decided to go kind of equal throughout the world. So I picked two countries per continent with the understanding that obviously no one's really from Antarctica. So, you know, before anyone told me there's seven continents. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> I picked two countries and a book from each of those countries. And that's what I'm going to go through today. Um, I, unfortunately, when I lost some of the content on my laptop, lost a lot of the stuff that I'd written about basically which countries I'd read from because I kept a list and I was trying to kind of read, you know, I'm trying to read around the world. And I had a list per continent and I was kind of clicking which one I'd read and blah, blah, blah. And I lost that. So I'm trying to go by memory. I think these are definitely countries I've not read from. So let's dive right in. In the first continent, we're going to start with Africa. The first country and book I'm going to read from is from Senegal. And this is Une si longue lettre, uh, such a long letter by Mariama Ba. This is, I think, a classic of African literature, actually. It is in the epistolary form. So it is two women writing to each other, and it's very much supposed to delve into the condition of women in Western Africa. And I think this book is from the 1970s, if I'm correct. So I look forward to reading it. I think it's quite short, so I definitely want to get to it soon. The second country in Africa is Eritrea. And this is a recommendation from Draw Your Books, and it is African Titanics by Abu Bakar Kal. And it is a short novel about basically um, refugees and migration, and it is about African boat people. Uh, this is the word of the book. <laughs> and it is about basically the ex exodus and exile through the Mediterranean. And I heard that it's very, very powerful. And I, yeah, I can't wait to read that one as well. And I think it's quite short. We love a short book. Then let's move on to Oceania, which is the one I've really struggled to find authors from and uh, books from those regions as well. Uh, last year I read something from Samoa and yeah, this year I've picked two. I've picked Fiji, Fiji and Vanuatu. So for Fiji, I'm going to be reading A Kaliana by Rajni Mala Kelawan. And this is set, I think in the 1960s, but it's quite, I think it's a recent book, like from the 2010s, 15 something. And so this is based in the 60s, around the time that Fiji gained its independence. It's about a young girl basically going through that and she's of Indian heritage so I think there's that kind of mixed into that and also there's a female revolution so I think it's going to be really interesting. I look forward to diving into it. I heard it's quite, it has some really difficult moment to read but I shall see and I shall report. For Vanuatu I'm going to read Sister Stand Up Strong, a Vanuatu women's anthology. So as it says it's an anthology of writing by a woman from Vanuatu and it's I think three generations and it's a bit of everything poetry non-fiction essays um fiction sort of stories you know so I think it's gonna be a really cool one to read I don't know much from that region much less country you know so I think yeah I think it's gonna be a good one and I look forward to really kind of stepping out of my comfort zone <laughs> and I think with anthology it's gonna give me a few different voices as well which is always good for Europe, I'm going, well, I've already started it. It is Voices from Chernobyl by Svetlana Alexievich from Belarus. So this is basically the personal stories behind the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. And I believe that there's a recent TV show, obviously fic uh, a sort of fictionalized about the real disaster. And it was so good. And I think this is one of the books that they um, use for research and also is taking off my, you know, one of the women who won the Nobel Prize for Literature, um, Zvetlana Alexievich won it. So yeah, it's really interesting. I started reading also something else by this author, which is a lecture that she gave about being a journalist and about writing, you know, people's stories. 
and it's also like it's really good to pair that with voices from Chernobyl. At the other end of Europe I'm going to be reading from Greenland next and this is Crimson by Mivia Korneliusen. It was translated from Greenlandic by Anna Hallager and this is very modern about five friends who are living in Nuuk, uh, the capital of Greenland and I think it's you know like a young woman's perspective on life growing up there and living there and I, I've been wanting to read this book for years. I got this in 2019 before the pandemic and I have not really touched it since. So, you know, a good thing to tackle one of my books. Yay! <laughs> now let's move on to Asia. And the first country that I pick for this region is North Korea. And I've been wanting to read this book for a long time. It is In Order to Live by Young Mi Park. This is a memoir about when she escaped or her and her family escaped from North Korea. And I think I found quite a few I have uh, memoirs from North Korean and I really wanted to read like a female perspective and I, I've been hearing about this book so I will try it. But if you have other options just please let me know what you thought. The second country I've picked is Afghanistan and I'm going to be reading from Khaled Hosseini. I haven't picked yet which I'm going to be reading. The Kite Runner or A Thousand Splendid Sun. I know people have said I should start with The Kite Runner however I heard that a Thousand Splendid Sun is more about female characters and you know how I love that so I've not decided yet. Which one do you think I should read? Let me know. Maybe I'll follow you know what people recommend. Next we're going on to the Americas. So let's start with South America first. So I picked two that kind of felt a bit like classics. I'm unsure about them yet but yeah let's start first with the first one. The first country was Venezuela and it is Doña Barbara by Romulo Gallegos. And he, actually this author is now, I think he was the first, first democratically elected president of Venezuela, <laughs> but also an author, you know, overachiever clearly. This novel was published in the 1920s, late 1920s, and it is about basically, I think it's their cousin, so there's Doña Barbara and her, uh, a male cousin, and they're basically kind of fighting for, uh, you know, possession of the family land and estate. Uh, apparently there's a line between violence and I want to say like seduction. It sounds really South American. <laughs> I, that's why I have some issues with these. I've picked these two male authors and also from a very different generation because I feel like these are sort of classic authors and classic books that I feel like would be good and interesting to read and teach me about those countries. But I don't know yet. Oh yeah, anyway. The second book is Aunt Julia and the Scriptwriter by Mario Vargas Llosa. He was a Nobel Prize winner and yeah, I I feel like I have to read this. This was one of the books that I could find. And it sounded kind of weird and quirky and fun, but also then I read it more into it. Incest. Anyway, um, so this is about a young man who works at a radio and he starts an affair with his aunt, which, you know, Aunt Julia I'm guessing. And he also becomes a heavy relationship uh, I guess a mentorship maybe with a scriptwriter who's really like powerful who arrives at the radio as well. <sighs> yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. It feels all very South American, very macho, which is why I have an issue with reading some of the men from South America, especially like of older generation. So we shall see how that will go. And I will see if I end up switching those authors for something more modern, more female, non-binary. I have a non-binary author that I'm going to be reading. They're from Chile though, so... Uh, I couldn't find, like, count this author as a new uh, country to me. But yeah, we shall see. You know, come back for my update on what I'm going to decide to read for South America. There's not that many countries I haven't read from left, I believe. Um, but yeah, it's difficult to find stuff. Anyway, let's move on to North America. And for that, I picked two women because I picked two men. For South America, I feel like I had to pick with two women. The first one is actually, it's from... Uh, Central America, technically North America, whatever, uh, is from Guatemala. So it's called Knitting the Fog by Claudia de Hernandez. This is a nonfiction, so it's a memoir about uh, Hernandez's kind of migration, you know, um, to the US from Guatemala when she was an adolescent, I want to say, like a teenager. And apparently it's really, really powerful. And I, I look forward to reading that one, actually. I already have saved on my library app. And finally, the last book for my reading around the world is a book from Haiti. And I'm not sure if I've read from Haiti before. I feel like I have, but I'm not sure if I did or not. 
So I'm adding it here because I own this book. It's called Mémoire Errante by Jean Dominique. And this is a memoir, like the name in French suggests. It's a memoir that touches on basically the author's father. So her father, Jean Dominique, was a very powerful, like not powerful, but a really important figure in Haitian history. And he was murdered in 2000, which kind of triggered her and her mother's exile uh, to Montreal. And I guess that's what she recollects and talks about and also about freedom and freedom fighters, you know, and all of that in this book. My mom has read it because I bought it and in Canada. <laughs> She's read it and she thought it was really, really touching. And next time I'm in Canada, I'm going to try to pick it up. So yeah, I'm really excited for that. Um, and well, for all of these, uh, yeah, I have, I'm hoping I will manage these. I'm hoping I will manage these countries. Maybe the books will change. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. Have you read from these countries? Is there one book that you're like, oh my God, you have to read this book. Please let me know. I would love your suggestions and your opinions, you know, and also which book from Khaled of Saini should I start with? Let me know. And as always, thank you so much for commenting, for liking, for following me and for watching. And here's Bye.